go, Toby. I wouldn't go if I didn't have to, see? Well, what about me? Not knowing if you're ever going to come back alive. I do come back, don't I? Till now you have. Someday you won't. They'll get you. Now, you ain't going to worry, Mom. Promise me. I'll do my best, Toby. When will you be back? Oh, in a week or two. A week or two? Why so long? I can't work around this neck of the woods. It's around here respect us. Well, we've got to respect their boundaries. So we've got to work out of the county. What you got there, Toby? Oh, just an old newspaper. Let me have it. I need some newspaper to make a bustle. You, you double it over and run a ribbon through. Oh, listen, Steve. When I come back, I'll buy you a satin bus with feathers on it. Look at that. Don't read that. That's an old newspaper, anyway. Oh, it's a... It's an awful thing for a woman to walk through the streets of a town in a... in a... the children. I've been worrying about you ever since I got back. You've been worrying. How do you think I felt not knowing whether you were alive or dead? I'm alive all right, see. They don't get me that easy. Thank goodness. Where are the kids? They're home. Home with my family, Toby. What are they doing there? They're gonna stay there, Toby. What's the matter, Ma? Matter? You don't know what I've been through. They telling me what I got to do. Now, Mother. What I've been listening to is the wonder I'm not deaf. Doing, Zeke. Taking my belongings. That last bank was too much for everybody. Oh, that that was a nine-day wonder. There have been too many nine-day wonders. Years of them. I can't stand it anymore. I won't. I promise. Please, Zeke. Think of the children. I am thinking of them. They don't even know their own right name, though. It was in every newspaper on that train yesterday. Why, well, I had to ride backwards so they wouldn't see it. My, I never was so car sick in my life. Now have a cup of tea, Ma, and you'll feel better. I've stood for this in every county in Texas. This is the only part left that we can live in, and for you to come back here and start up again, why, well, I'm going to finish my packing. I had to quarrel with my folks to get back here at all. I'm going back tomorrow, early train. You mean you're going to walk out of here? You're going to break up your home, your family? Huh. I won't believe it. Home? This isn't a home. Why, I never drew a free breath in this house. Howdy, ma'am. Good morning. Would you mind fetching a trunk in the bedroom, please? Yes, ma'am. I couldn't believe you'd do it. I left all my diamonds upstairs. I don't want them. Well, I'm not going to wear $500 worth of valuable diamonds and start people talking. You can wear those diamonds. I bought them with my own money. Not after the Texas Pacific holdup. I don't want them. You got any money? All I need. I'll send money regular. And I'll send it back. I can't take money from a man I don't live with and respect, can I? Well, a lot of folks are living together that don't respect each other. And they get on fine. Eight years. Eight years and it has to end like this. 
I owe the milkman 17 cents. I never thought that day when you asked me to marry you and the mule power merry-go-round. The poor children. I slept alone down there last night like a dog. Seems I don't deserve those children. Seems I'm not a human man. Seems my children's got to forget me. Seems they'd be better off without any father at all. They will. I'll teach them to. Go ahead. I ought to have left this house long ago. Well, why didn't you? I didn't stop you, and I ain't now. I didn't because I was a fool. I left your letters up there, too. All of them signed. Yours till and through death. Tobias, the lion's ship. I didn't want to take anything out of this house to remember you. You took the children, didn't you? I had to. You're badly advised. I had to. You sure are. I had to. Oh, Ma, don't cry. I'm Lincoln, Toby. I'm, I'm never going to live with you again. Oh, Ma, you all head up. How can you go to church and pray for guidance when you live the way you're doing? You're right, Z. Nothing matters but you. You and the children. And I'm wrong, dead wrong. I'm going to make a vow, Z. A sacred vow. In church. I'll never ride out again, so help me. Oh, Toby. And Z, we'll have a real church wedding. Like I always promised you. You had better take that trunk back upstairs. Mrs. Heath won't be leaving after all. I don't know how I thought I could do it. I'll never leave you again, Toby, never. Thank you, Z. We're all here now, Reverend. Can we start? Never saw a man so anxious to get hitched. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll just step here and hold hands. Thank you. Pardon me, Reverend. Told me there's some strangers riding down the road a piece, and one of them's on that white mare. Are you sure, Billy? I'm getting sure every second. Oh, no, Toby. No, you're not. I got it, Z. Excuse me, Reverend, but we'll have to finish this some other time. Goodbye, son. Goodbye, daughter. Mind your mother. You'll hear from me in a few days. I'll tell you where we'll meet up. I'm sorry, honey, but I promise you we'll have that church wedding here. Good luck, Toby. can you have for an outlaw? Outlaw? Well, who is he? Why, he's the El Paso Kid, Reverend. The El Paso Kid? Don't take it so hard, Z. Toby's a good man. And your old marriage was a good legal marriage, of course. A justice of the peace may be as holy as the church wedding, but it's just as binding, Z. Just as binding. And you got two fine children to prove it. that have a real church wedding 
and sleep indoors with walls and floors and goose feather quilts for their bed. She was left all alone today in church when the sheriff broke up their wedding on his bridal night. No bride in just his self and his horse heard his bed. What are you planning on doing now? Don't you worry. Billy, I'm going to get me a new stake. Off in the train? No. Off in a bank. A bank? That's more dangerous, kid. No, I got a new way to get money from a bank. You have? Yeah. I'm going to borrow it. Borrow it? That's the newfangless idea I ever heard of. I guess I'll turn in. Lending money from a bank. I sure hope he ain't gone local. What do you want? I'd like to open an account with your bank. You want to make a deposit? Well, not exactly. It's the other way around. I'd like to make a withdrawal. Withdrawal? Oh, I suppose you mean you want a loan or some money. Is that it? Yes, sir. That's just what I want to do. All open and above board. I'll give you my note. Your note? <laughs> I could light cigars all day on notes people want to give me. How much money do you expect to borrow? Five hundred dollars. Five hundred? That's all you want, eh? <laughs> got any collateral? Nope, ain't got any. Just my word. And it's good. I never broke it. Is that so? Well, I'll have to consult my cashier on this uh, business matter. Are ah, there? Yes, Mr. The gentleman here wants to borrow five hundred dollars. Just on his word. No collateral at all. <laughs> You think we ought to give it to him? <laughs> well, do I get it? Mister, where do you come from and what's your name? I come from the Pecos country. My name's the El Paso Kid. Oh, the El Paso Kid? Oh. oh. There's no need for ducking and that kind of goings on, mister. This is a business call. Yes, Mr. Kid, yes. Five hundred dollars is all you want, Mr. Kid? That'll do. Yeah. Arthur, give the gentleman five hundred dollars. Fine, fine. I'll give you my note. Yes, yes. That'll be all we need. Uh, this bank feels very friendly to you, sir, and I, I hope that you feel friendly to the bank, Mr. Kidd. I sure do. Hurry up, Arthur. Hurry up. Well, there you are, my note. Deal's closed, all legitimate and above board. Anything else? Well, just one thing more. I don't work around here, and I want you to keep this transaction secret. Is that agreed? It's agreed. I won't tell anybody, Mr. Kidd. Fine, fine. Well, I've got a lot of riding to do before sundown, so I'll get along. I'll see you in 90 days, yeah. if not soon. Ah, uh, Arthur! Get the sheriff! That was the El Paso kid! Get somebody after him, you idiot! Get somebody after him! And on Sunday, you must pray the whole day through. But there's always trains on Monday, and the banks are open, too. With his good wife on a Sunday, and his kids around at play, he thinks fondly of the Monday and the job that he's planned that day. 
And the next day, and the next day, he's dreaming fondly on Sunday of the job that he's planned next day. Nice folks in this town, Z. Real neighbors. And they like us too, Toby. That's a good name we've got this time, Z. Heath. And we're gonna keep it good. Promise me, Toby, promise me you'll never let it get bad. Well, I'd hate to have to change our name again. It's so hard on the children. They keep losing track of who we are. Now, don't you fret, Z. That's going to be my son's business someday. And we're going to stay right here in this town. Pardon me, Mr. Heath? Oh, yes, sir. I couldn't make it into town yesterday, and I'm running pretty short on feed. I wonder if you'd mind opening the store to help me out. Mighty sorry, but I can't do business of any kind on the Sabbath. But, uh, here's the key. Just help yourself to what you need. Put the key under the mat there. Well, that's very generous of you, but leaving the key under the mat. Neighbor, I've been in this town for months. These people are my friends. Besides, who'd want to rob me? You know, Z, it was sort of nice to walk into a bank just like any other man. Quiet, not a hand up. I kind of enjoyed it. The more honest your living becomes, the more enjoyment you're going to get out of it. You're right, Z. And I'm going to keep it that way as long as I possibly can. Toby, don't you mean forever? Well, naturally I mean forever. God willing and business improves. Well, good day, Brother Williams. Mr. Williams. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Oh, ma'am. Hello, Billy. Billy. Howdy, Jim. Well, hello, Howdy. Jim. 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 Say, seeing you again is worth a long ride and the chance I took coming here. You sure look good, kid. Thanks, Jim. Hey, you, you too, ma'am. Thanks. Here's Jim Walsh. Got in just after me. Howdy, Jim. Howdy. Sure glad to see you. I thought you'd ride in tonight. Ma, this is Jim Walsh. Jim can bunk with Jed. Howdy, ma'am. How are you? I'm always glad to see you, Jim. Jim's one of my old friends, Ma. Yes, the minute I saw him, I was sure of that. Speak to you for a moment, please. I got company, Ma. Hold it a little while. I can't hold it for another minute, Mr. Heath. It's got to be right now. Pardon me, boys. But when she calls me by one of my adopted names, she's upset about something. Now, Z. What are they doing here, Toby? Those awful men. Why, the only decent one of the whole bunch is poor Billy Taylor, and if he stays around the much, he'll be just as bad as they are. You're right, Z. I'll tell you what. I'll send him away the first chance again. I don't want him on my conscience. You're gonna ride out again, aren't you? Aren't you? Please, Z. I'll tell you about that later. But you promised me, Toby. We was gonna keep the name of Heath so sweet-smelling. That's what I'm doing it for. The hay and feed business is all right, but the money I got left isn't enough to keep me going. I only got enough to pay off the bank. And I gotta have more and have it quicker. The place will be sold out from under me. Then let it be sold out. What about the people who sold me my merchandise? I gave them my word. I'd pay them back. And I'm going to if it's the last thing I do. But you gave me your word, too. Yeah, I know. It's a sin to steal from one party to pay back another party. And after all the nice friends we made here, and our children's friends, why, we just have to move on. I'd rather move on than to see you start in again. This is the last time, Z. I promise. Well, when do we start? Tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. Here's the route. Here's where we're aiming for, and here's where we'll meet. Lake. West Shore Trail. Right there. Is it clear? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big job, boys. They're shipping a lot of money back east. It's all right. But I was hoping it was an express office in a fair-sized town. A stagecoach is safe. Why, Jim, it's getting so a fellow can't walk down the streets of a town with a few pistols on him without attracting attention. Is that right? Sure terrible what Eastern civilization's doing to men. Yeah.
from here. Now look her over from top to bottom. Nobody dare give me a bad steer. They must have switched the shipment. Well, let's pull out of here. We'll split up and meet at my place. You'd better turn back. Turn back? Yeah. I don't want you on my conscience no more. You mean you don't want me around you no more at all? That's it. You better get. Goodbye, Billy. But I ain't done nothing, kid. There ain't no reason for you to treat me that way. You got a girl? No. You had a girl once, didn't you? Yeah, I did once. A long time ago. She was decent, wasn't she? I don't know. I didn't ask her. Sure she was. Now you go find her and marry her. Have her cook your meals and wash your clothes. And bang some sense into your bones. And keep you home. Well, I couldn't sleep in my bed nights wondering where you was and what road you took. I'd get up and leave her and... Listen, you. You get married and settle down to family life or I'll knock you cold. Now get going. Hospitality, ma'am. A bite of supper. A hunk of corn pone and a cup of tea. I might have hog meat if you got it. Sure would be a kind favor. I've been riding a long way. Get out! The hunk of pone and the mite of hog meat I got is gonna last me forever. I'll chaw slow and alone. I'll pay, ma'am. I'm liberal. What you doing around here? Uh, just on my way to meet some friends. We're gonna catch a stage in the morning. I got nothing for you, son. And I'm sick of men a-passing by and a-dropping in and a-spitting round. Uh, don't be scared of me, ma'am. I don't aim to harm you. I never forgot that my mother's a woman. A bite of hog meat and a piece of corn pone washed down with a cup of tea would be an act of charity, ma'am. Well, welcome. Say it. Now, that's kind, ma'am. Say, I'll bet you're a Baptist. I am. Hard shell. Shake, sister. Don't be nervous, ma'am. I'm a family man myself. What might your name be? Might be Jackson. What's that for? You ain't a gonna give me a great big greenback just for one meal of vittles. Oh, oh no. Sure am. Oh, I won't take it. It's too much. Eat and welcome. You take it, sister. There's plenty more where that come from. No, I, I, I can't. Get John. Forget it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, I hate to take it, but I, I ain't got one cent to my name. Not one. I'll get some wood. Let me. Oh. 
Howdy, kid. Well, I'll be. Didn't I send you back, Billy? Yep. I just wanted to say that trail's bad going down. Washouts. Got to be careful in the dark. I met a fella just come up. What, another one? A widow week, this is Billy Taylor. A Baptist in good standing. And he's just going home. Sure. Well, I'm a dad bird. A gold wash. Must have cost a heap of money. I don't know just what it did cost. I got this watch off a leading citizen. <laughs> Must have thought a lot of you to give you all that. If he didn't then, he's thought a lot of sense. You'll have to excuse me for being so rough with you when you come in, but I'm a lone widow woman, and... You must have had a good man your morning and so. No. He was the meanest, fist-fightingest man in the panhandle. The pappy traded me in marriage to him for a mule when I was 14, and from the wedding day, he just oozed cussedness. Drunk up the corn, and he wanged the young'uns, and you couldn't get a clean shirt of drawers onto his lazy bones, not even of a Sunday. How long you married to him? Nine years. How many young'uns you got? Nine. He sure was a tough man. Yep. Before he died, he set this whole farm and cabin down on a piece of paper. Some devil around here showed him how to do it. He got money for that piece of paper and drummed it all up. Now, I, I can't pay back what he got. Billy, I'm glad you were here after all. I should help her, but I can't. Don't let her get another cent out of it. I'm sorry for your misery, ma'am. Help yourselves. We're waiting for you, ma'am. I ain't hungry. You all eat. The sugar's in the gourd. What's the matter, ma'am? Fellas coming tomorrow to put me out. I'm moving down the trail without no place to move to her. I've had warning, but. I'm lost. That's terrible. Don't you be soft hearted, Billy, and don't you let me. All I got left to owe to the bank. Now, come on, ma'am, set in. Have some tea. It's good for sorrow and grief. Tea's my only confidence since my young and got took away. Who took them? His folks. Said I couldn't raise them all alone. That's hard. Ain't no schools around there. No schools? Ain't a Baptist church within 50 miles. No church. You gotta get them back. Hold on, kid. Now mind your own business. You gotta get them back. How much do you owe anyway? All the money there is, I reckon, $200. $200? You see this? It's a receipt. Now, don't you let nobody get it out of your hands, because it'll be all you got. And you make that fellow that's to come and sign his name on it before you pay. Say what? You got any neighbors? Old man Gowdy around the bend. Men and his family? Eight of them. Well, get them all in for witnesses. You can't be too careful in business. What's the day of the month, Billy? Dang if I know. I lost track. I know the year. Well, that buckaroo that's coming for the money can write it down. What money? Yeah, what money? I'm warning you. Hold on, kid. I'm paying your debt, ma'am. You're paying my... How can I give it back? You can't. Now, don't you part with this year until that buckaroo signs that there. Thank the Lord above us. All the heavens above us, everything above us, I'm funny, Parker. Me too. I got a roof over my head. I got a farm. I got my youngins back. The nine of them. My darling, my darling. I dreamed a dream that's coming true Just how to spend my life with you Only with you Old moon is a crescent And old gal nature's in two and no one to spy us 
in case we two want a spoon. My darling, my darling, I'll always love you like I do. Just to be loved right back by you. Billy, I wouldn't be surprised if that stranger coming down the trail ain't the buckaroo that's calling on the widow weeks for his money. Yeah, I reckon it is. I'm going to rest right here in the bushes. What for? The good book says, relieve the weary traveler of his burden. Huh? I'm going to relieve him. I did not take possession, Mr. Hickey. Why not? For the pure and simple reason that the widow weeks paid up in full. What? Two hundred dollars? Impossible. Maybe so, but she had it. She did, eh? Well, let's see it. Hand it over. Mr. Hickey, you better sit down and get a fresh light on that cigar. What are you driving at, Sam? Well, I'll tell you, I will. Sam, I don't like jokes about money. This ain't no joke, Mr. Hickey. I was sure held up. And I don't like it either. You don't like it. How do you think I like it? I had that with a week's place as good as sold. Papers were out. Bank would have made all the twenty dollars and said... Instead, I nearly got shot in the back. Well, that's part of your job. What, getting shot? You were swearing, didn't you? Yes, and I'm going to swear out. Well, I'll tell you, take no loss. <laughs> no, sir. Well, my family ain't going to take the loss, neither. Where did she get that money? All I know is what she said. She got it off a passing bathroom. What? I've been president of this bank for 30 years, and I ain't never seen a man pay that much money for just passing the widow. That fellow that held me up, he must have known what I had on me. What did he look like? I don't know if he was behind me. Couldn't he ever sneak the quick look? He asked me not to. What did his voice sound like? It's right soft and friendly. Friendly? Mm -hmm. And another thing. He must have put the widow up to making me sign that receipt. That's all she kept saying. Sign that receipt. Sign that receipt. Any witnesses to the signing? Yeah. Eight. Eight? Sam, I'm not so sure that you was held up. I'm not so sure but what you was drinking and playing casino. How much further? Oh, calculate about 10 miles. 10 miles from war. I told you, Jed, that bank where I borrowed the money. You ain't going back to any town for a while, are you, kid? I got it, Jed. I got to pay off my note. You're out of your head. Old cut will be looking for you. Stay back some other time. Banks has got more money than they deserve anyway. It ain't the money, Jed. It's my word. Giving back money to a bank. Yeah, with interest. Step into my office. Yes, Mr. 
Now you sit down and shut up. I'll get the truth out of her. I know how to handle these women. Scare them. Skim stiff. Good day, ma'am. It's a great pleasure. How are you feeling today? I'm President Hink, here to help the ladies. But they call me Pop. <laughs> oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Allow me. <clears throat> now, let me help you straighten things out. I'm just here to get my recipe, then I'm going. Yes, yes, certainly. But before I can give you back the deed, or recipe as you call it, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sam here tells me he received a sum of money from you. Payment in full, I said. He sure did. Yes, yeah, but unfortunately on the way back, he was held up and lost it. He was? Well, I thought the road was safe now. It's been suggested to me that the, uh, the uh, gentleman who gave you this money may have uh, taken it back. No, sir. He wasn't that kind. He was a good living Baptist. I see. Of course, if he did, the transaction is void. It's what? Void. What's that mean? That you haven't paid a cent. You mean to tell me that I didn't give that quilt no money? I mean to say that we'll have to investigate whether you did or not. Now, if you let me see what Sam signed... The stranger would give me the money, say to hold on to that recipe till the day I die. He say he don't trust no banks. I reckon now he would write. Oh, now, surely. You give me what I come down here for. I don't want no more truck with you. Now, please let me see that receipt or uh, recipe. Nope. He put his name to it, and I'm not keeping it. Get it off her, Sam. You've got the right. Oh, I ain't so sure. It depends on why she's got it. I ain't lived alone and helpless for nothing. And any man aiming to take my clothes off for a recipe better not try it in a bank. Down, brother, I'm here on business. I thought they were real fond of you in this thing. They are. Is Mr. Hickett the president now? Yes, sir, inside. You two wait here. Just keep a friendly eye on the door. Anyone comes in, see that they stay in till I try and take my business. Well, hello, hello. How are you since I saw you last? This is a friendly call. Put your hands down. Well, my note's due today, ain't it? Oh, howdy. Or I dropped in to see about it. I don't want you to get the wrong impression of the El Paso Kid in this bank, Mr. Hickey. It's treated me fair. El Paso Kid? Oh, excuse me, ma'am, for addressing a perfect stranger. But you here on business, too? I reckon I am. Then after you. Ladies first. Only make it brief. Kid. Hello? Man wants to come in. Let him in. Hold up. I reckon. Is he in? Yeah. Don't let him out. If you've got business, ma'am. I paid this buckaroo. He's a deputy. Uh, just a minute. Pass me your arms in a sociable way. I'm not asking you for your gun, Mr. Hickey. We're friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides, I can always tell a weapon under a Prince Albert coat. You were saying, ma'am? I give him all my money, and now he says I didn't pay a cent. I did not. She paid me $200, and I'll swear to it. Anyway, they want to take my clothes off to find the recipe. No, no, ma'am. No, no, she misunderstood us. I never... Women don't understand business, Mr. Hickey. My wife don't always understand mine. We're here to protect widows, ain't we, Mr. Hickey? Certainly, sir, certainly. After all, Mr. Hickey, widows are the backbone of this nation. I expect so, yes. Then give her a satisfaction piece and make it legal this time. Unless you want me to drop by later, I can. No, 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 that's not necessary. Not at all necessary. Yes. Yeah. Hello? Two men coming in. See if they're in. Yep, they're in. I'll tell Jed to give him some of those cigars he has. Make them look natural from the front street. Yeah, I can. Got some of those cigars, Jed, in my breast pocket. Legal, all right. Here you are. Thank you. 
sure was a streak of luck I met you. I don't care who you be. That's all right, ma'am. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Hick, it's business between us, eh? You and me. Here you are. Count it, sir. $500 on my note and $4.17 interest. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kidd. Count it. No, I'll take your word for it. That's pleasant to hear, but my word's good. I keep it when I give it. Count it. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, and four dollars and seventeen cents, correct. My note? Oh, yes, the note, yes. Now, I put that note, I think, in this drawer somewhere. I had it, yes, and there it is. There's your note. Thank you. Is that all? I hope, I mean, I think that's all, yes. Do you close? Close, yes. We're square? We're square. That's good. Yes. You know, Mr. Hickey, folks don't understand me. I always wanted to trade with one bank where I was welcome. Come and go like any other man. I appreciate the faith. Reckon we know each other now, and we'll go as peacefully as we're comfortable. Say, I've had real pleasure in our transaction. I want to count you as a friend. Thank you, Mr. Kidd. Just call me Kidd. You know, I never was so surprised in my life, uh, uh, uh Kidd. <laughs> I said I would, didn't I? Yes, but the bank didn't understand it that way. <laughs> You mean you didn't believe me? No, I... You didn't trust me? I mean that you... You don't mean you thought it was a holdup? Well, I suppose you must have seen what the papers said about it. No, I haven't read the papers. I've been away tending business. I'm hard up, Mr. Hickey. But when I came here today with a... Hey, kid, be out soon? Yeah. With a friendly feeling to pay what I owe. Oh. I regret the misunderstanding, and I thank you. I thought I signed my name and got your promise it was a secret transaction. When I wrote in before, all alone, a private citizen, if you'd have refused me, I'd have walked out. I would, because I didn't want any trouble. I only asked you for a loan. You lent me the money. I understand now. I understand. No, you don't. What you don't understand is that I'm at the head of my business, just as you're at the top of yours. And I take it as a personal insult that the boys all over the country have read about our deal. But you acted like an honest man. That's just it. And what do they think of me now? That I'm losing my grip? When it comes to letting people believe I'd stoop to rob a bank and for five hundred dirty dollars and never touch the safe, never crack the plum? Me? Well, a man's got his pride. Now then, Mr. Hickey, you know your business, but you don't know mine. And I'm going to show you the difference between barn and a holder. Oh, raise your hand. Hey! Move. Outside. Yes. Sit down. Yes? I'm going to tap the safe myself personally. This is the darndest, friendliest visit I ever paid. I'm going to vindicate my honor of plenty. Hello, ma'am. I forgot about you. Billy, pass one lady out. Thank you. God bless you.
Jed. They'll never take the kid. You know they can't. That was the kid's way, Billy. Looking after Russ. Somebody's got to tell Z. Come on. Hello, Jim. When'd you get back? A while ago. How'd you two get through alive? Why? Ain't you seen the papers? The infamous Desperado pursued by heroic citizens after bold bank robbery three days ago. In desperate plight. Trapped in the woods. Escape impossible. Surrounded. Well, if you hadn't sent me home, I'd be with them now. Reward for the kid, Mountain. Where is his business? Don't know. No one here, and we got in. What did you let him go back to that bank for? Let him. He couldn't have stopped him. Never heard of such a thing. Borrowing money from a bank. Sounds kind of crazy. Boys, I reckon they got the kid. An extra just come out. They never took the kid alive, never. He was born in El Paso County, and he'll die there. He said so. No, they never took him alive. Going out in the stable for a while. Don't want anyone with me. Oh, Jeff. A little closer than brothers. Gosh. They got the kid. Sure, they get them all. Only one paper had a good word for him. Yeah. With all that money on his head, somebody would sure turn him in anyway. Say, you. Bye, Jingo. There's a happy sheriff. All that money, dead or alive. A lucky cuss. Oh, oh stop it. What's the matter with you? What are you going to rouse the neighbors? Are you crazy? No, I ain't. He is. I'm just telling the truth, that's all. What's that? Did you hear something overhead? Yeah. Pinkerman's out there. The state's full of them. Kid! Now, what's your out? Can't a man sleep in his own house? Kid! Where'd you come from? We thought you was trapped in the woods. The newspaper said Kid, you're alive. How the devil did you get here? On the Pullman train, Jim. Pullman? Didn't no one see you on the Pullman, Kid? No, it didn't seem to. I just rode along naturally like everybody else. Nobody knows what I look like. Ain't no photographs of me laying around. I tell you... You hungry, kid? Uh, no, I ate on the train. I tell you, it's a lesson to a man. A lesson what I've been through. Never get your picture took. <laughs> That's right. Hey, where's Jed? In the barn. I'll get it. Well, boys, what's the news? You're the news, kid. Guys. Well, here you are, anyway. Yeah, if I'm home. There's no place like it. Boys, it's on me. The stagecoach job's on me. I sure come back loaded. That back. What a haul. What a pump. <laughs> I'm splitting with all you boys. Ah, oh, no, kid, no. Nah. You're gonna take it. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, what was the row about? Sure woke me up out of a sound sleep. Uh, nothing, kid. Weren't nothing. We're just over the reward for you, kid, dead or alive. Charlie here thinks that one of the boys had sure turned you in for all that money. No, nah, no, nah, he didn't mean it. No, no, I didn't mean nothing. Sure. He didn't mean nothing. He's young. He just talks. Sure. 
He's young. I'm you ask Marshal Gregg. May I come in? Why, I... I want to see your husband, ma'am. Oh? You're Mrs. Heath, aren't you? Yes. Uh, my husband went out, I, I think. I'll see you wait here. Uh, just a minute, ma'am. In case he's out, I could tell you what I want. I, uh... Well, perhaps I better not. You can tell me. Well, I'm organizing a party, and I... I ought to go you. I'm sorry, ma'am. Mighty sorry. Oh, I changed my mind about going out. Oh, I didn't know there was anyone here. This Miss Beneath? Yeah. I'm U.S. Marshal Gregg from Dallas. You're the fellow I'm after. How's that? I've been making a few inquiries around here. Yeah? And finally, I asked the minister nearby for the best citizens in his congregation. Your name headed the list. Thank you, Marshal. Sorry I can't ask you to come into the parlor, but it's Wednesday night. Mrs. Heath's sewing circle's in there. It's all right, I can't see anyone. Anyway. Mr. Heath, we're getting up a posse to patrol the roads from here to the state line. And I deputize you. What for? To help round up the El Paso kid and his gang. I see. You've got good horses, I hear. Well, yes, I use them in my business. I deal in grain. I travel a lot. But I read in the paper you took the El Paso kid. Killed him, in fact. Oh, the varmint got away again. But we'll get him this time. We're going to close every blasted road in the state. The watchword is, bring in the El Paso kid. Keep it to yourself. You can depend on me. Good. Uh, just one thing about working with you. I can't let my business go entirely. I'm a family man. That's understood. You see, I ride around looking up future prospects. So, while you close the road to the kid, can't you give me an identification card so I can get through and get my business over quick? A pass, you mean? Yes. Oh, sir. What are your initials, Mr. Heath? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this'll do it. I'll let you know where the posse's meeting as soon as we organize it. Thanks, Marshal. You do that. There ain't no place I'd feel safer than right in the middle of your posse. Good night, Mr. Heath. Good night, Marshal. Good night, Mrs. Heath. I'm sorry I interrupted your sword, Pete. Good night. Toby, sometimes I think you're in league with the devil. No, Ma. I'm in league with the law. Oh, kid, there never was the likes of you. What a song this will make. Keep me out of your songs. All the roads is closed and we ain't got a pass. That's so. Better all start riding before they get organized. Good luck, kid. Come on, Jim. So long, Toby. Take good care of yourself. Jeff. Bye, kid. So long, boys. Good luck to you. Go on, Billy. Get back to the fakers. No, kid, you need someone. Get, I tell you. And no fooling this time. Please, Mom. Give me another chance. I'll sell the business the first thing in the morning. We'll go to California. We've never been there. We'll have a real church wedding. And I'll start all over again. That's what I'm afraid of. You'll start all over again. I'll be up late packing, so you'd better sleep in the parlor. Goodbye, Toby.
not knowing exactly the work he did. The kid was calling himself Keith at that time. He swore he'd been to a posse gang to chase himself the kid, himself to chase himself the kid. A good joke on the marshal. Oh, he chased the kid all that night while the marshal's posse was in flight. Then he spurred up his horse and he changed his course and he left that posse out of sight. Yes, he left them out of sight. And he spurred up his horse and he changed his course and he left that posse out of sight. So he chased himself all night. What again? What do I have to do to get rid of you? Plow you under? I started to leave, kid. But the barn was as far as I could get. Well, at least you're loyal, Billy. Here, I'm giving you a steak. Take care of it. No, I, I ain't no tick bird. You take it and bury it in a clean tin can in an unplowed field like we've done before. Don't put it in no bank. I might come along. Save it for a rainy day when I ain't around no more. No, I, I can't take it on this, Toby. I got a feeling as soon as I'm gone, you're going to make for home in the winter weeks. Well, do it. Kid, that fellow that come to see you last night, that U.S. Marshal, I saw him in the town square a little while ago. Well? He was sitting up on a high dish nose horse, a calico horse she was, in front of the courthouse, a shouting, fellow citizens. I never saw so many horses in my life. Sorrows and blacks are filling the road in the square and spilling over into front yards. Fellas sitting on them with ropes are yelling, we'll get them this time, we'll string them up and leave them a dangling. Billy, you can go down there and bet them all that money I give you. They won't. Gentlemen, howdy. Who are you? T. E. He, he, Marshal's deputy. Put up your hand. Just reaching for my pass. I'll reach for it. T. E. He, he, deputy. Signed by the marshal. That's right. Let him by. Good evening, Mr. Eve. Good evening, Marshal. Gonna join us? No, just out on a little business. Maybe you better join us, Mr. Heath. Put up your hands, kid. You sure made a fool out of me last night. I sure did. Cinch him tight, Amos. Mind telling me who gets a reward? A good friend of yours, kid. At least he says he is. He's young. He don't mean nothing. Let's get moving. We heading for a courthouse marshal or a tree? We're not all outlaws in the state of Texas. We'll get a fair trial. All right, let's get moving. See? You can visit me once a month. Why, in 120 visits, the sentence will be up. Ten years. Ten years. Yeah, and that skunk Charlie Jackson gets off scot-free. And $10,000 for turning me in. Jed came to see me, kid. Says not to worry. He's got a plan. You tell Jed to stay where he is. Not get mixed up with me no more. I'm glad it happened this way, Billy. It's a load off of my mind. When I get through paying my rightful debt, I'll be a reborn man. That's so, Toby. for being my wife all through this. I'm proud of you, Toby. And I'm going to teach your children to be proud of you. Goodbye, Z. 
when you come up to visit me, cook me some corn pone and hog meat the way you make it. Be quiet. You sure are a mighty unretrained companion. Listen, you tin horn bandit. I don't want to hear any more conversation out of you. In Dallas, we'd have given trash like you 50 years. Sorry, mister. I won't make the same mistake again. <laughs> pocket and lock these handcuffs. Make one move that I don't like and I'll blow you apart. That ought to hold you. Look out for yourself, mister. They're bad runner boys. I know them all. should hold me till we get to the state capitol. How's your shoulder, Marshal? All right, kid. Good. Texas is sure a mighty pretty country, ain't it? Sure is, kid. Yeah. I was raised in these parts. like you're a hero, kid. I'm from the Chronicle. Tell us how you did it, kid. Well, to tell you the truth, it weren't much different than holding up a train. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Thanks for coming to meet me. And I want you all to know I'm mighty glad I was born in Texas. <laughs> faithful unto her so long as you both shall live? I do. Do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and obey him in joy and sorrow, in health and sickness, in prosperity and adversity, 
And to be faithful unto him as become with the good wife so long as you both shall live? I do. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I pronounce you husband and wife. Amen. Well, they made it. I sure didn't think they ever would. You're in church, you darn fool. <laughs> Yeah. 